Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes, we are still in the Easter season. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and we have seven Sundays total in the Easter season. That also includes an extra added special celebration, Ascension Day on May 18th. And so we continue this message series called Born Again, based on the readings from 1 Peter that have been read throughout the Easter season here at St. Matthew. And so far, we have explored how God promises us, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we are born again to a living hope, that we are born again through the living and abiding Word of God, and how we are born again to die to sin, and live to righteousness. All of this, as I said, is ours through the resurrection of Jesus. And there is no event in the history of the human race that carries as much significance or weight as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It literally changes everything. It changes who we are from lost and condemned creatures to found and redeemed children of God. It changes even the way we measure time. We have gone from before Christ to in the year of our Lord because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the very foundation of our Christian faith. Without the resurrection, there is no Christian faith. And that would change the way the world looks today if there was no Christian church and no Christian faith. And through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are chosen, royal, holy, and then commissioned or called to proclaim the gospel. First, chosen. The word chosen means to pick out or select someone as the best or most appropriate of two or more alternatives. We are selected, we are chosen by Christ. He died and rose again so we could live with him forever. When I was a kid at recess, we would choose sides at this time of year for a softball game. And the two best athletes in the class would be the captains, but how would they decide who would choose or select first, they would knob up the bat, right? And the one on top got the pick first. And then they would choose, they would alternate, choose this kid and that kid and this kid and that kid. And you never wanted to be the last one picked, right? Remember that? Remember in third grade when you would choose up sides for the kickball game? And there was always one or two or three kids that were the last ones picked. Maybe that was you. Remember how you felt? You don't have to worry about feeling that way when it comes to being chosen by God. God loves all of us equally and unconditionally. He doesn't love anyone more or less than anyone else. And he chose us in Jesus Christ, his son, and in him There is no one who is best or most appropriate, so you are chosen. You are also royal. Someone who is royal is a person living and having the status of a king or a queen or a member of a royal family. Christ is king of kings and lord of lords. And because we are his, we are also royalty. We are also holy, and to be holy is to be dedicated or consecrated to God or to a religious purpose. And the working definition that we use in the adult discipleship class is that to be holy means to be set apart by God for a specific purpose. To be holy means that we are basically consecrated by God, usually in holy baptism, to do something. And that something is to tell others about Christ, which brings me to the last word in this title of this message, proclaim The word means to announce officially or publicly. We who are born again now make the official announcement that Christ is risen and we are all forgiven, which is good news, because it means that we are no longer enslaved to sin. We are no longer enslaved to death or to the power of the devil. Now, Peter then, after giving us the title for the message today, 
goes on to paint a common picture of this enslavement. It is the darkness of sin. It's a very dark place to be when we are enslaved to sin, to the lusts of the heart, to the passions of the world. When we want to rely on our own strength to help ourselves or to help someone else, that can lead to a very dark place. The darkness of frustration and pain. There's also the darkness of pain from sickness or injury. And then there's the darkness of hopelessness and misery. However, when this darkness is a result of our sin, we have this assurance that we're no longer enslaved to sin. We have the assurance of the resurrection of Jesus, the, that assurance of Christ's marvelous light. So chosen, royal, holy, proclaim. This is what it means to live in the marvelous light of Christ. This is what it means to live the born-again life. As I said, being chosen means that God has chosen or selected you to be something better than the three things that you came into this world as. as I, and I've talked about this. You've, you came into this world, one, spiritually dead, not able to do anything other than sin. You come into this world with original sin, the original sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, re recorded in Genesis 3. You also come into this world spiritually blind. You cannot see God. You cannot find your way to God or to heaven because of original sin you are literally in the dark and lost and then there's one more piece of bad news you came into this world enemies of God the original sin that you were born with leads to active actual sins and that makes you an enemy of God because you choose to not do what God wants as recorded succinctly in the Ten Commandments which means you choose to reject God and his ways. That's what being an active enemy of God means. You're rejecting God. You're on the other side. You are battling against God. But the good news is that God chooses you anyway, and he chooses you to take you out of this dark way of life. You are chosen by God and receive the forgiveness of sins, won by Christ with his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. Chosen. Royal. Because of this choosing by God, you are now royalty. This weekend, royalty was on the mind of a lot of people as a new king of England was officially crowned. But you and I know that there really is only one king. Jesus Christ is king of kings and lord of lords. And we have the added blessing that Jesus then, the king of kings and lord of lords, calls us his brothers and sisters. Matthew 12, 50 says, Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and my sister. Jesus is our brother through our adoption as children of God, which happens through the means of grace. And as a member of this royal family now, we have a weekly royal family meal that we attend that strengthens the family bond with the king and each other. We call it the Lord's Supper, or by another name, Holy Communion. And that's part of what makes us holy, set apart for a specific purpose, by God, for God. Don't misunderstand the word holy. It doesn't mean that you and I are perfect. It means you and I are being perfected, made perfect, or righteous by God. And we are in that process our entire life, until we reach heaven and perfection. And this happens through the means of grace, as we are dedicated, consecrated, and the church word that we use is sanctified, and all these words mean that we are being made holy for the specific purpose of God. To do what, though? Proclaim the goodness and the boundless love of Christ. As I told you earlier, proclaim means to make an official or public announcement. And it is our official announcement from the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As St. As, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. Ambassadors, officially making an announcement. Not only, though, is it official, it's also public. 
We go out into the world. We go out into the public, amongst our neighbors, amongst the people of this world, and we announce what? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia. We officially announce and publicly announce that through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sins and the sins of the whole world are forgiven. And that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can, by faith given to us through the means of grace by the Holy Spirit, accept the forgiveness of sins. This is what it means to be chosen, royal, holy, and commissioned or called to proclaim this good news. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's okay for people like you, Pastor, or for teachers or, you know, super Christians, but not at all. You are not chosen because you have great abilities. Neither am I. Now, you may have great abilities. Maybe you are outgoing, gregarious, and a wonderful motivator. But in and of yourself, you have no beauty or worth because of sin, original sin, that God would choose you. I don't either. In fact, there is no such thing as a super Christian. God doesn't call the equipped. God doesn't look for people who have it all together, who have all the right qualities, who are loving and loved and perfectly, pr practically perfect in every way. God doesn't call the equipped. God equips the called. You and I are, and all followers of Jesus are chosen because of what Christ has done for us. And if you're thinking, oh, but I can't be chosen. I'm not beautiful in any way that God would choose me. But God doesn't choose the beautiful. Even Jesus is described as not beautiful. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Where have I heard those words before? You've heard them on Good Friday. It is from the suffering servant song from Isaiah 53. It is about Jesus and his death on the cross. See, not even Jesus was beautiful, but what Jesus did was beautiful. You know, we have this expression, Beauty is in the, in the eye of the beholder. On the one hand, you may think that some abstract work of art is ugly or maybe even offensive, and yet art experts somehow value it at hundreds of thousands of dollars in art museums. Meanwhile, stuck to your refrigerator door with a magnet is a simple drawing from your little child or grandchild, which leaves much to be desired in terms of technique and would mean nothing else to anyone else but to you. It's beautiful. It's a treasure. God treasures us. Not to some special beauty or quality within us, yet God in his redeeming love joins us to Christ through our baptisms. And although the world sees no beauty in God's people, we are connected to Christ and therefore chosen and precious in God's eyes. What Jesus did was beautiful. What Jesus did was for you, to make you chosen, royal, holy, and empowered to proclaim the good news that Jesus is alive, has won the forgiveness of sins for all people, and has opened heaven to all believers in him. The boundless love of Jesus meets the boundless need in this world that makes us chosen, royal, holy proclaimers of boundless hope. The boundless hope that is ours now because alleluia christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah amen